For around an hour, they dribble, spin, pass and shoot, sneakers squeaking on the shiny gym floor. It's quite a workout for these Olympians and Olympic hopefuls. After all, Beijing is only a few days away, but soccer isn't their sport. At the Manhattan Fencing Club, there are five Olympians training here right now. Dagmara Wozniak, Tim Morehouse, James Williams, Jason Rogers, and myself, Keith Smart. I train uh, five days a week here uh, at the Manhattan Fencing Club for four hours per day. And in addition to that, we'll do like one day of just physical fun activities you know, to break up the monotony of training. While professional fencers elsewhere in the world are highly subsidized and often pampered like celebrities, Smart acknowledges that Americans generally don't know much about the sport. Often, he said, images of sword fights and ornate mahogany country clubs come to mind. Yet much of Smart's fencing world consists of this small, musty room above a fabric dealer in Manhattan's garment district. The thing with fencing uh, as a child in New York City is n not many people know about it. So I constantly felt like I was a trailblazer explaining to them that it's an Olympic sport. It's, uh, it's open to everyone. A couple of the biggest misconceptions people have about fencing is that, you know, it's to the death. You know, it's a duel, like to the death, like Three Musketeers or Zorro. And um, it's not like that at all. The weapons are very blunt. Uh, rarely does anyone get cut, and the cuts are ever deeper than a paper cut. Fencing is separated into different categories based on weapons used. Foil and epee are thrusting weapons, whereas saber, which is smart specialty, is more of a swiping instrument. I'm right now in my practice competitive gear. What you see here is uh, the Olympic version of the knickers, a little bit older, but uh, these are made out of Kevlar, same material used in bulletproof vest. The jacket, which is underneath my lame, is also made out of Kevlar and it's resistant up to 800 newtons of force. And then uh, on top is a lame, which uh, transmits the uh, electricity through the scoring apparatus. And this lame covers the, all the target area, as well as my glove mask. And finally is the saber, which it measures about three feet in length. And uh, that's, this is what we use to fence with. The saber is electric so that whenever there's a, a hit made, it's registered on the machine by light, indicating whether I hit them on the lame or they hit me on my lame. It's a regular sport like any other. We have gym, physical trainers, practice just as regular as any other sport. Like in most sports, behind every great fencer is a great coach. While Smart started fencing at the age of 11 with his sister Erin, also an Olympic fencer, it wasn't until he began training with Ukrainian coach Yuri Gelman that he took his game to the next level. First of all, he is extremely talented physically, like really gifted physically. And uh, it gives him opportunity to do much less physical work, especially, than uh, other guys supposed to do. You know, I take people from the zero and try to bring them on the highest level of fencing. Gelman undoubtedly catapulted Smart to the highest level. The Brooklyn native is the first American fencer to have been ranked number one in the world. Heading into his third Olympics, Smart is the veteran on the team and has become a coach in his own right. He's an inspiration and a mentor to younger athletes like Dagmara Wozniak, also a Red Storm fencer. She works so hard, probably more than anyone else. And she doesn't have maybe so much talent as a kid, but she works ten times more than he. It's why it's bring her in this level. She's actually a very good person. And I would say even maybe a little bit too good. You know what I say to be a very good athlete? You're supposed to be a little bit, a little bit bad. Not a bad, but you know, you're not supposed to be very hard open, you know, very nice. She's a little too nice. She's too sweet. You know, even though I'm with these like high caliber fencers, I don't feel any way underneath them because they treat me on the same level as them. That's one thing that I really cherish about these guys. Uh, they train with me, they don't, you know, put down other people regardless of, of your level or strength or anything. They train with all of us, they want all of us to get better and help, so Keith is just like another really good training partner for me. He's great. He's a seasoned veteran, so we look up to him, he's, I mean, we couldn't have a better team captain, really. At the Sydney Games in 2000, Smart said he was like a kid in a candy store, just happy to be there. 
Four years later, in Athens, his hopes were dashed, and he took a year and a half off from the sport. This year, Smart spent two weeks in a hospital with a rare blood disease he contracted at a tournament in Africa. Doctors said he would never fence again, but here he is, aiming for victory at the Olympics, the mecca of elite fencing. My goals for Beijing are pretty simple. It's just to win a medal. I think I've I achieved everything else possible in my career with uh, high rankings, winning of numerous tournaments. So at this stage of my career, the last thing missing is a medal. Everyone in fencing remembers who the Olympic champions are. We hope the best. I don't like to give exactly prognosis, but I tell you that uh, Keith is ready to win individual medal now. Maybe much more than last. Sadly, Smart and his sister will be competing in Beijing without their proud parents in the stands. Their father Thomas died of a heart attack in 2005, and their mother Audrey succumbed to colon cancer this past May. I would love to um, win a medal for, in memory of my parents. Uh, I, they, they were just such huge supporters of both my sister and I and our athletic and personal accomplishment that um, to just give them something back as a thank you would be amazing with that being a medal. But regardless of how I finish at the games, I know they're looking down and being extremely supportive of uh, my life choices.